How Princess Diana died is a mystery that still haunts the royal family. Was it an accident or was it something even more sinister? Let's uncover what happened that night. Before moving ahead, make sure that you've subscribed to our channel and have clicked on the bell icon. As the first wife of Prince Charles and mother to Prince William and Harry, Diana captured everyone's hearts and minds with her charming persona and keen fashion sense. However, it was her married life that was most talked about. It wasn't a fairy tale, nor was it a story of star-crossed lovers. It was a tale of a woefully mismatched married couple. The story started in 1977 when 29-year-old Prince Charles was casually dating Diana's bold older sister, Lady Sarah McCockerdale, and met 16-year-old Lady Diana Spencer at her ancestral home of Althorpe in the fall. Despite the huge age gap, Charles was mesmerized by Diana. In one interview, he said, I remember thinking what a very jolly and amusing and attractive 16-year-old she was. I mean, great fun and bouncy and full of life and everything. Soon, they both started to get to know each other better. However, one instance in the relationship solidified their affection for one another. It was the year 1980 when Lord Mountbatten was murdered. Charles was upset and Diana was there to comfort him. These frequent meetings caught the attention of the royal family and in 1981, Prince Charles proposed to Diana. Interestingly, the prince knew within just a handful of meetings that he and Diana were ill-suited for one another. It's almost as if Charles had accepted that if he couldn't marry Camilla, who had been married to Andrew Parker Bowles since 1973, he wouldn't be happy no matter who he married, and so he just went along with what his father thought was good for him and his country. After knowing each other for three years, they got married on July 29, 1981 at St. Paul's Cathedral. Their wedding ceremony was magnificent and watched by a television audience of around 750 million people. However, deep inside their hearts, both Prince Charles and Princess Diana had their own doubts. Despite this, they tried to work their troubled marriage, and Diana gave birth to Prince William in 1982 and Prince Harry in 1984. But the Prince of Wales wasn't very happy with their second child being a boy. In Diana, her true story, she recalls, Then suddenly, as Harry was born, it just went bang. Our marriage, the whole thing went down the drain. It was mainly because of the fact that Diana hid her knowledge of their second child being a boy from Charles. In the next two years, the differences between the royal couple continued to grow bigger and bigger, which led Camilla's return to Charles's life in 1986. Both Camilla and Charles were married at the time. However, it's alleged that Princess Diana also had an affair with the Kaddish former British Army Major James Hewitt. The final nail in the coffin of this royal marriage was the release of Diana, Her True Story, in May 1992. The release led to an international scandal, which led to the inevitable separation of the couple in December 1992. Desperate to share her perspective, she poured out the details on a set of audio recordings in May 1991. Entrusting her close friend Dr. James Colthrust, she had him daringly deliver the package. Yes, on a bike from Kensington Palace directly to a UK journalist named Andrew Morton. In those revealing tapes, Princess Diana shared the intimate details of her darkest struggles, unraveling the truth about the Camilla scandal, her ongoing fight against bulimia, and even her revolving thoughts of suicide. While the public perceived the life of a princess as a royal fairy tale, the stark reality, as revealed in the tapes, was far from enchanting. Princess Diana famously referred to Camilla Parker Bowles as the third person in her marriage. Surprisingly, Prince Charles didn't hide his obvious affection for Camilla during their marriage. Despite initially being friends, repeated incidents fuel Diana's suspicions of a covert romance. Charles and Camilla reportedly had nicknames Fred and Gladys for each other. The two weeks before marrying Diana, Charles gifted Camilla a personalized bracelet with G and F on it. He was also spotted wearing gold cufflinks with interwoven C's to a formal dinner. Prince Charles' unmistakable affection for Camilla understandably sparked skepticism and jealousy in Diana. She confided in her sisters, expressing doubts about going through with the wedding. However, they told her she had no choice. 
As per Sally Bell Smith's biography, Prince Charles, The Passions and Paradoxes of an Improbable Life, it's claimed that Charles cried the night before his wedding, unable to overcome his infatuation with his ex-girlfriend Camilla Parker Bowles. Diana, in her personal account, revealed she overheard Charles talking to Camilla on the phone while he was in the bath. Upon hearing him say, whatever happens, I will always love you, Diana confronted Charles about their relationship, resulting in a heated argument between the two. Diana attributed the onset of her eating disorder to the stress from their deteriorating marriage, noting that it began after their engagement. In her own words from the book, Diana reported, My husband put his hand on my waistline and said, Oh, a bit chubby here, aren't we? And that triggered off something in me. On June 29, 1994, Prince Charles sat down for an ill-advised interview with Jonathan Dimbleby, where he admitted to cheating on Princess Diana, stating that the marriage had become irretrievably broken down, us both having tried. In the next year, on November 20th, Princess Diana sat down for a now infamous panorama interview with the duplicitous Martin Bashir. She spoke about her unhappiness, her eating disorder, and admitted to being unfaithful to Charles while taking a dig at the illicit relationship between Charles and Camilla. Princess Diana famously remarked, There were three of us in this marriage, so it was a bit crowded. This led to the royal couple filing for divorce in 1996, and tragically, Diana passed away a year later. On December 9th, 1992, Prime Minister John Major announced, It is announced from Buckingham Palace that with regret, the Prince and Princess of Wales have decided to separate. Their Royal Highnesses have no plans to divorce, and their constitutional positions are unaffected. But soon came the year 1996, when after being separated for almost four years, the royal couple decided to part ways officially. The key phrase here is, no plans to divorce. Princess Diana reportedly did not want a divorce. In a 1995 interview with Martin Bashir, when asked about her wish to divorce, Diana responded, no, it's not my wish. However, by February 1996, Diana had agreed to a divorce. So what happened that changed the decision of Princess Diana? In late 1995, Queen Elizabeth encouraged her son and Diana to divorce. Recognising the circumstances, the Queen wrote to both the Prince and Princess, expressing her view that an early divorce was desirable. Per the terms of the divorce agreement, Diana kept her apartment at Kensington Palace and the two split custody of their children, Prince William and Prince Harry. Prince Charles and Princess Diana formally divorced on August 28, 1996, and a year later, on August 31, 1997, Princess Diana tragically passed away. Princess Diana was an international icon. It was impossible for her to avoid the paparazzi. In the final years of her life, Princess Diana chose to dismiss her police protection despite continued paparazzi attention. Despite the constant presence of photographers, she developed skills to avoid them when she wished to maintain privacy and even tipped them off when she wanted to be seen. However, when Princess Diana started dating Dodie Fayed, things spiraled out of control. Press and paparazzi started stalking the couple, which eventually cost the couple a life. Diana first met Dodi during a 1986 polo match, where he competed against her then-husband, Prince Charles. However, they wouldn't reconnect until 11 years later. In the year 1986, Dodi got married, but his marriage ended within the next eight months. Then came the year 1997, which took the life of both Princess Diana and Dodi. Before rekindling his connection with Princess Diana, Dodi was reportedly engaged to model Kelly Fisher. However, their engagement came to an end when Dodi began a romantic involvement with Diana during her summer vacation in St. Tropez with Prince William, Prince Harry and his family in 1997. Both Princess Diana and Dodi started enjoying each other's company. The relationship was progressing and rumours even say that he was going to propose to her. On Saturday, August 30th, 1997, Princess Diana departed from Olbia Airport in Sardinia, Italy, aboard a private jet. She was accompanied by Dodi Fayed, an Egyptian film producer and the son of businessman Mohammed Al Fayed. Their destination was Le Bourget Airport in Paris. Prior to the arrival in Paris, the pair had spent the previous nine days together aboard Mohammed's yacht. Johnny Carl cruising along the French and Italian Riviera. Their original plan was to stay overnight in Paris, where Mohamed Al Fayed owned the Hotel Ritz and had a residence on Rue Arsène Jose, situated a short distance from the hotel and just off the Avenue des Champs Elysees. 
Henry Paul, who held the position of deputy head of security at the Ritz Hotel in Paris, had received instructions to drive a hired black 1994 armored Mercedes-Benz S280 saloon. The choice of this vehicle was intended to help them evade the paparazzi. To further confuse the photographers, a decoy vehicle left the Ritz first from the main entrance on Palace Vendome, drawing a crowd of media attention. Princess Diana and Dodie Fayed, however, opted for a more discreet departure strategy. They left the hotel room near the entrance on Rue Cambon at approximately 12.20 am on August 31st CEST. Their destination was Fayed's apartment on Rue Arsène Hossaye, not located too far from the hotel and just off the Avenue des Saints Elysees. However, they never reached their destination. In a bit to evade the nearly 30 photographers gathered in front of the hotel, Princess Diana and Dodie Fire chose a discreet departure strategy. Seated in the rear of the vehicle, they were accompanied by Trevor Rees Jones, a member of the Fire family's personal protection team who occupied the front passenger seat. Their route took them from Rue Cambon across the Place de la Concorde and along Cour Lerine and Cour Albert, first ER, the embankment road along the right bank of the River Seine. They continued their journey into the Place de l'Alma Pass. At 12.23 am, Henry Paul lost control of the car at the entrance to the Pont de l'Alma underpass. The vehicle, an armored Mercedes-Benz S280 saloon, reportedly collided with a passing white Fiat. Following the impact, it swerved to the left of the two-lane carriageway and crashed head-on into the 13th pillar, supporting the tunnel's roof. The car was traveling at an estimated speed of 65 miles per hour, which is more than twice the posted speed limit of 31 miles per hour for the tunnel. The force of the collision caused the car to spin, hit the stone wall of the tunnel backward, and ultimately came to a stop. The absence of a guardrail contributed to substantial damage, particularly to the front half of the vehicle. Witnesses arriving shortly after the crash reported seeing smoke and some noted that photographers on motorcycles had surrounded the Mercedes saloon before it entered the tunnel. The photographers who were trailing the Mercedes at a slower pace and some distance behind reached the crash scene promptly. Upon arrival, some of them immediately rushed to assist, attempting to open the doors and aid the victims while others focused on taking pictures of the aftermath. Police arrived approximately 10 minutes after the crash, around 12.30 am, and witnesses reported that an ambulance was on site five minutes later. Amid the chaotic scene, France Info Radio reported that one passenger was allegedly beaten up by a horrified crowd. Five photographers were arrested on the spot and later two individuals were additionally detained. Approximately two rolls of films were confiscated directly from the photographers and the vehicles were impounded by the police. Firefighters were also called to assist in removing the victims from the wreckage. Trevor Rees Jones sustained multiple serious facial injuries and a head contusion, but despite the severity of his injuries, he remained conscious. Notably, he was the only one wearing a seatbelt at the time of the crash, according to the reports. Reports also revealed that the front airbags in the vehicle had functioned as intended. Princess Diana, seated in the right rear passenger seat, suffered critical injuries, but remained conscious after the crash. The impact primarily affected the right-hand side of her body, suggesting she was sitting sideways in her seat at the time of the collision. Diana's injuries included fractures to her ribs and arms, a dislocated right collarbone, and swelling and bruising to the brain. Witnesses reported that she repeated the phrase, Oh my God! And after photographers and other helpers were pushed away by the police, she said, Leave me alone. In June 2007, a Channel 4 documentary titled Diana, The Witnesses in the Tunnel, claimed that the first person to attend the Princess Diana was off-duty physician Frederick Malias, who happened to come across the scene. According to Malias, Diana did not display any visible injuries but was in a state of shock. She was described as extremely disturbed, removing an intravenous drip while shouting incoherently. At around 1 a.m. after being sedated and extracted from the car, Diana went into cardiac arrest. However, her heart resumed beating after receiving CPR. Subsequently, at 1.18 a.m., Diana was moved to the ambulance, which left the scene at 1.41 and arrived at the Petier Salpetier Hospital at 2.06. Dodie Fayed, who was seated on the left rear passenger seat, was pronounced dead at the site shortly after the crash. Henry Paul, the deputy head of security at the Ritz and the driver of the vehicle, was also pronounced dead at the scene upon removal from the wreckage. 
Initial reports indicated Diana had a concussion, a broken arm, and a cut thigh. However, she had also sustained massive chest injuries. Despite two hours of effort in the operating room, doctors were unsuccessful in restoring Diana's heart to a normal rhythm. Princess Diana never regained consciousness and succumbed to internal bleeding at 4.53 in the morning on August 31, 1997. Frederick Maliers, an EMT who coincidentally was driving through the tunnel at the time of the collision, reported that Diana woke up in pain from internal injuries and kept saying how much it hurts. Tina Brown narrates the sequence of events in her book, the Diana Chronicles. She turned her head and saw the lifeless Stody just in front of her, then turned her head again to where the front where the bodyguard was writhing and where Henry Paul lay dead. She became agitated, then lowered her head and closed her eyes. In 2019, Richard Shepard, Britain's leading forensic pathologist, determined that Diana died from a tiny, badly placed tear in the vein of her lung. He stated, Her specific injury is so rare that in my entire career, I don't believe I've seen another. Shepard believes that Diana's death could have been prevented with one small change, wearing a seatbelt. He expressed, Had she been restrained, she would probably have appeared in public two days later with a black eye, perhaps a bit breathless from the fractured ribs and with a broken arm in a sling. The sole survivor of the crash was Diana's British bodyguard, Trevor Rees-Jones. His decision to wear a seatbelt played a crucial role in his survival. According to a statement from French authorities provided on the Monday following the crash, Henry Paul, the acting head of security at the Ritz Hotel and a licensed driver, lost control of the car due to exceeding the legal blood alcohol limit. He had reportedly been drinking and driving recklessly, which ultimately led to the tragic accident. Eyewitnesses reported the paparazzi in cars and on motorcycles were pursuing the black Mercedes carrying Princess Diana and Dodi Fayed, hoping to capture photos of the couple. Soon, conspiracy theories surrounding the crash flooded the newspaper. Mohammed Al Fayed, Dodi's father, initially believed Diana was pregnant with his son's child, a notion later disproven by forensics. Another theory suggests that Diana had fears of such an attack. In 2003, Diana's former butler published a note she had written soon after her divorce from Charles in 1996, expressing her concerns and paranoia. This particular phase in my life is the most dangerous. X is planning an accident in my car, brake failure, and serious head injury to make the path clear for Charles to marry. However, all the theories were debunked by the British Metropolitan Police in 2004. But one theory that still stirs controversy is that Henry Paul, the driver, was not drunk that night. Henry Paul's state of intoxication on the night of the crash involving Princess Diana, Jody Fayed, and Trevor Rees Jones has been a subject of debate. While some witnesses described him as drunk, there was no unanimous consensus, with some asserting he appeared sober. According to the investigation, French authorities concluded that Henry Paul's alcohol level was three times the legal limit. However, legal limits vary across Europe, and by some measures, it was stated that Paul was only twice the British legal limit. Nevertheless, regardless of the specific legal standards, it was established that he was over the limit at the time of the incident, based on the blood samples analysed. However, it gets interesting with a new revelation. There was a level of controversy regarding the blood samples, with suggestions that one of them might not have belonged to Henry Paul. Professor Athol Johnston, a clinical pharmacologist, suggested that there could have been a mix-up and one of the blood samples might not have been Paul's. However, other experts disagreed with the assessment. Despite the uncertainty, authorities concluded that any potential mix-up was likely accidental. Another unlikely circumstance that raises questions is why none of the CCTV cameras in the tunnel were operating at the time of the crash. Pascal Paulin, who served as the room commander on Saturday, August 30th, 1997, told the investigators about the events of that night. According to Paulin, the hotel staff attempted to use the camera in the Place de l'Alma to observe the crash site. However, as reported in the Operation Paget inquiry, they encountered difficulties, and it was deemed impossible to get a clear view through the camera at the specific location. Diana, arguably the most famous woman in the world, lived her life under constant pursuit by paparazzi. It may not be surprising that evidence of her death was similarly captured, but it is certainly shocking. In the immediate aftermath of the incident and accident, seven French photographers were arrested and questioned by the police. 
Charges of manslaughter were brought against nine photographers who followed the Mercedes and took photos after the crash, as reported by the New York Times. However, they were not found guilty of manslaughter. Three photographers were found guilty of invasion of privacy and were fined a symbolic one euro. After the accident, the Queen came under a lot of scrutiny and addressed Diana's death after five days. It was a tough moment for everyone. Diana's funeral took place on September 6, 1997. Similar to her wedding, the funeral was a spectacle, with 750 million people watching Diana get married on TV and a staggering 2.5 billion viewers witnessing her funeral procession. Even after 27 years of her death, Diana still continues to inspire people, and she's loved the same way that she was loved before. Make sure to like and subscribe to our channel and watch the next videos.